Hello everybody and welcome to this fifth lesson in the Trade Life Cycle series where we're going to start talking about the various processes. So we've already covered the different products. We've spoken about the market participants in the earlier video and in this video we're going to talk about the pre-trade requisites. Can an investment bank or a hedge fund or a commercial bank just start trading anybody directly, you know, without any questions asked, like how you walk into a mom and pop grocery shop or a kirana dukan you buy stuff you pay the money transaction is over deal is done is that possible with the bank you log into mintra you log into flipkart you buy whatever stuff you want to buy online you make the payment for it you get the items over is it so easy in the case of a bank so let's try and understand what are the pre-trade requisites in a bank as i've already explained these are the videos that have already been uploaded in the trade life cycle lessons the first one was on financial markets. The second was on understanding equities. The third was another product description of fixed income securities. And the fourth one took a look at the different market participants like custodian, depository, broker, prime broker, and so on. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what are the pre-trade requirements. Can a bank and a customer directly start trading the minute they, uh, you know, want to? So the more important question is why is there such a high degree of financial regulation in the markets? And despite that, there has been a lot of amount of money that's been going in and out of the system, which is not right. Okay. So the pre-trade requirements are a large factor of understanding the compliance issues of the bank. Pre-trade is especially required in OTC markets. Over-the-counter markets are markets where direct trade transactions are held between brokers or directly between dealer and dealer or between banks. It could be a bilateral trade. It could also be a broker-driven deal. But OTC markets generally tend to have a larger amount of credit risk exposure and therefore OTC products have a defining moment of pre-trade regulations as compared to exchange rate products. The risk largely in a pre-trade requirement could be credit risk. Of course, there's market risk and therefore banks also put in a lot of market risk regulations, but credit risk is the largest risk, the risk that the counterparty would default. As opposed to OTC kind of products, exchange traded products are less credit risk simply because of the requirements of the exchange itself. Banks nowadays insist on KYC completion, know your client or know your customer. And this has to be a very integral part of establishing a financial and a legal relationship between the investment bank and the customer. All this comes under a big gamut of the risk management system of a bank so that you know that banks are dealing with risky clients, they are dealing with risky products, Obviously, they will not because if they don't deal with risky products and risky clients, then the kind of returns that they're supposed to get, right, is kind of comes, comes down. Therefore, banks are compelled to take on customers who don't have AAA rating. Okay, now in a client portfolio, you'll have clients who are AAA rating, AA, B, sometimes even single B kind of credit, risk, credit ratings that a borrower has, but then you're forced to do that, you're compelled to do that because... The AAA borrowers are very good, but they don't give you very high returns in terms of interest rates and commissions because that's why they're called as AAA, right? So before you trade, it's like suppose you want to make a, you know, you've called guests over to your house and you want to make a, you want to have a lavish party for them. You know, you have to think about everything before the actual event. Similarly, in pre-trade, you have to think about who are the customers you want to have, what are the financial requirements of the customer, do you want to take on somebody with a name like Dawood Ibrahim on your uh, uh, client list? Do you want to take on a, a drug peddler as a client? And so on and so forth. So all of this comes under the pre-trade requirements. KYC. KYC is know your customer. Very important part of any financial institution, whether it's a banking institution, whether it's an investment bank, whether it's a mutual fund, whether it's a hedge fund, no, not necessarily for a hedge fund, but anything that is retail driven like an insurance product, all have to comply with KYC or know your client. This is a regulatory requirement from both capital market regulators as well as financial market regulators and client onboarding 
is a very important part of presenting to the bank the financial and non-financial credentials of the customer not necessarily a borrower okay for borrower anyway you do a credit risk assessment but even a depositor or even an investor who puts money into the bank know your customer know your client is a very important part of client onboarding it's basically getting all the documentation with respect to the customer so that the banks are in a position to understand these client requirements and what are the kind of money that's coming in. So you must be wondering that if you're going to uh, lend money, then you have credit risk. Then if you're going to borrow money, what kind of risk is there? So when, a, when, when uh, people like you and me go and put money into a bank, we're depositing money in the bank, right? The bank gives us interest. That means we are lending money to the bank. Then why, what is the fear of the bank from us? <laughs> in fact, we should be afraid, right? If the bank fails, what will happen? Where is the money safe? So the point is, over here is, when you do KYC, you want to know what is the source of the funds. You want to know where is that money coming from, okay? Direct questions and answers don't reveal the truth. And therefore, there's a little bit of prodding, there's a little bit of investigation that takes place before accepting a client on by the investment bank. Client onboarding is a very important process which starts with the sales guy soliciting clients, includes due diligence, setting up the credit limits for the borrower or for the counterparty and having legal agreements in place before executing a trade. The sales desk is responsible for soliciting clients. These include largely institutional clients. Institutional clients include hedge funds, insurance companies, mutual funds who have billion dollar you know, kind of transactions in a year. So why does the sales desk prefer to have institutional clients rather than retail clients? The sales desk likes to have institutional clients because institutional client size orders, the volumes of trade are very high. It runs into millions of dollars per trade and therefore as the volume of trade increases, the value of the transaction increases, the banker earns more brokerage from the deal. So therefore, sales desk, the first job that the sales desk has is to solicit clients. And these are largely the institutional clients. These high value trades give tremendous brokerage to the bank. And the banks also value these relationships because they're then able to cross sell different kind of uh, banking products. This is the tricky part. Due diligence is a comprehensive activity by the middle office to verify the legal entity status of the counterparty. Okay. Now, retrade therefore is not a process or a step only of one division. There are multiple departments that are involved in the pre-trade process. We just saw the sales desk is involved, right? The sales desk is involved in the pre-trade process. In due diligence, is it the sales desk that is involved? Most certainly not. The sales guy is only thinking numbers, numbers, numbers. Whereas due diligence is thinking about legal veracity, verification, documentation. So obviously it's a different department altogether and this is most often the department called as the middle office or the risk and compliance. Due diligence is done to prevent the bank from having exposure to products and customers that do not fit into the requirements of the bank. The second one is verifying the financial status of the counterparty. So as the customer is submitting the documents for client onboarding, they also have to explain what are the legal status, what are the financial status, what are the nature of relationship, what are the nature of, is it the end customer, who is the beneficiary account, all these come into picture. This is a function of the middle office. So we are already seeing that in pre-trade, therefore do not think of trading and you know as being silos or done only by one individual person. They are completely integrated with other entities and hence Due diligence is a function of the mid-office. The mid-office is extremely cautious 
to understand that we do not get in bad money into the banking system. The client onboarding team then verifies the documents that are provided by the middle office, uh, by, by, the, by the counterparties to the middle office. And after verification of the documents, they update the system with all the client details. So you understand that sales desk gets potential new clients. Once you've targeted the new institutional clients, you want to get many details about them, financial, non-financial. And remember, these are clients who are not even borrowing money from you, okay? They're actually going to give you money, all right? And that's the kind of scrutiny that has come with respect to banks and the money that's entering the banking system. KYC is know your customer, which is built on three pillars. The first pillar is customer identification program. Are you able to identify who is the end customer? Is it a beneficiary account? The second one is, has there been a due diligence that has been provided? Look, last year, in fact, in 2022, not last year, last year, 2023, uh, in 2022, almost 18 banks in Europe have got fined thousands of dollars because they don't have a sound KYC program. Okay, so a KYC program is not just that one piece of paper that you sign Nowadays, even eKYC is done. It's not just that one piece of paper. You may see it as one piece of paper that you are signing because you are <clears throat> the customer. But from the bank's point of view, but but from the bank's point of view, it's a whole comprehensive procedure. The largest retail bank in India, for example, State Bank of India, has got more than 10 million accounts in just savings accounts. Okay. I mean, add to that fixed deposits, add to that your money market accounts, add to that your pension accounts. We have a whole large number of accounts that you're dealing with. So therefore, a policy and a procedure has to be formed to explain to the end customer and to bring all the employees within the bank on the same wavelength. The third step is enhanced due diligence. So there's an enhanced due diligence that is also provided that is also conducted, I'm sorry, for customers with specific traits or characteristics like their business history, like their economic history, like their political history and so on and so forth. Therefore, once all this is completed, the trading desk now has to start dealing with these clients, okay? So you understand that the first step was done by the sales desk, then you have the mid office, then you have the client onboarding team. The trading desk was just key in the number. Now they've got to get the customers to start trading and this becomes a part of the pre-trade procedure. They give market analysis and research on different types of products, what are the market sentiment, is the dollar increasing, is the dollar weakening, what's the performance of the S&P 500, etc. They then identify potential trades that would seem beneficial and highly profitable for the client and they give trading strategies to the sales desk who pass on the trade details to the, the trade, trade strategies to the client. The client then starts executing a order or start placing order. So all these activities happen before the trade. Remember, if you're calling out somebody for a large dinner to your house, you want to plan the starters, the main course, the deserts, the mocktails, everything. Similarly, before you do the deal, there's so much of planning between different departments that take place. And all these are subjective as well as some of them are quantifiable. Yeah, But if you don't do these pre-trade activities, then risk and compliance of the bank will be compromised. And therefore, all of this become an integrated part of a pre-trade activity. The next lesson is on the actual trade and the steps that are involved in that. This is your learning partner, Sushila Hari here, and signing off. Thank you so much.